Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com and welcome to this week in prophecy. Uh, topics this week, we got Gaza, we're going to do a Gaza operational update. Red Sea mess, that is, oh wow. Uh, Iceland volcano, that thing finally blew earlier in the week. Uh, and we're going to close with Pope Francis and blessings with a crystal clear message from the Vatican. Thank you. Uh, scripture reference, we're going to start out as Zechariah 9, verses 5 and 6. Ashkelon will see fear. Gaza will writhe in agony, as will Ekron, for her hope will wither. There will cease to be a king in Gaza, and Ashkelon will be uninhabited. A mixed race will occupy Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So... A reminder of what is to come, and we're talking about these areas here along the uh, the Mediterranean coast. So we have Gaza, we have Ashkelon, Ashdod, and just ancient uh, Philistines. Philistia was kind of in this area right here. Follow my cursor from 476 roads all the way down to the border with Egypt. And if you look at the greater context of those verses in Zechariah, that includes... Um, all this coastland, all the way up up to Tyre and Sidon, in le- what is modern day Lebanon. So, at some point, uh, this part of the Mediterranean coast is going to get cleaned out pretty good, according to Scripture, and that's corroborated with multiple prophets. So, um, I'll give you guys a little bit of an idea. I'm going to back this out because eventually we're going to end up down in the Red Sea here in a little bit. Um, but that's that's what that's what the future holds for the um, the Mediterranean coast, which would be Israel's west coast. So, going to take a look at War Mapper. He's been on a little Christmas holiday. Uh, Gaza Map update: the IDF have continued to make gradual advances over the past week in both the north and around Khan Yunis. Yunis. Israel has issued an evacuation warning for central Gaza. Just south of Wadi, Gaza, the initial separation line used for the operation in the north. So, um, to give you an idea here, uh, this, is, this is the... Um, Soar, S-O-A-R dot earth slash maps slash Asia. This is from War Mapper, and he designed this on what essentially would be Soar dot earth. This is a pretty cool tool. Uh, you know, you can back this out, make it a little bigger, zoom it in, which for our purposes, we do want to zoom it in. Resolution will get better as we go here. Um, let it catch up. But it's color coded with your uh, Israel Hamas controlled Gaza, Israel operations within Gaza. So, pretty, pretty neat chart. And if you want to drill down for those of you who are interested in really breaking down what is taking place inside the Gaza Strip, who occupies what, here's the evacuation warning that was discussed. The evacuation corridor has now shifted to the coast. We have a humanitarian safe zone in the far uh, southwest of the Gaza Strip. So, neat website. Again, SOAR, S-O-A-R dot earth. And this would be your latest uh, operational update as far as advancements and things that are taking place inside the Gaza Strip. So... And I think we have um, other things. That is not what I thought it was. Well, I mean, this is the original um, tweet or zeet post, whatever whatever they want to call it these days. You can go to these individual maps, look at them. Um, again, more detail if you're interested. So... Um, that's what's taking place currently in Gaza. 
And with that, uh, we also have a tweet or a post from uh, the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. I'll get this started. Um, from an area of Issa, Issa, within Gaza City. And so soldiers of the Yifta Battalion and Combat Engineer Forces struck Hamas headquarters and eliminated terrorists. Soldiers of Paratroopers Brigade who are operating in this area located and discovered a number of tunnels is what that's going to go on to say. And I'm going to keep this here. So this is, uh, they strapped a GoPro to a shepherd and put him inside the tunnels, breaking down what they're finding. Uh, this is about a two minute video, but this is pretty fascinating. IDF puts together some very interesting things things worth looking at. And if you go to their page on X, they have all kinds of stuff like this. Um, operational updates, showing what's going on, document. I think they're looking to just show different things of what makes up one of these tunnels and what it looks like from the outside um, or above ground as well little locks where terrorists can point their guns out of protected by steel plating tunnel shaft solar electricity very progressive hamas is they have water and electricity inside these tunnels meanwhile people struggle above the surface um take a look at all these things what happens when you go down into one of these tunnels They've been pumping some water into some of these things, but they don't know where some of the hostages are located, and they don't want to potentially drown some of the hostages that may still be alive inside of the tunnels. Is one of the ideas. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, here's the tweet in its entirety. Soldiers of the Yahalom unit and the Oketz K-9 unit examined and destroyed the significant and strategic underground tunnel route used by an underground base by Hamas. Again, so you've seen the two minutes in the videos. So uh, with that, we will transition to the Red Sea. Oh, what a mess. Numbers 10, verse 9. And the Lord turned the wind into a very strong west wind so all you climate zealots out there uh this is going to come as a shock but god says numbers says that god controls the weather mm. um <laughs> strong west wind lifted the locusts and drove them into the red sea not a single locust was left in all the country of egypt so god controls the weather and uh, the ecology of the land as he sees fit. Uh, mm, that's tough for y'all to swallow. I get that. Uh, the Red Sea is our topic, though. It's effectively closed to commercial traffic. So uh, ocean liners carrying uh, cargo going in and out of the Red Sea. It's all but shut down. Uh, here comes more inflation. Red Sea is now largely close to traffic. That's 8.8 .8 million uh, barrels per day of daily oil transit and nearly 380 million tons of daily cargo transit that go in and out of the Red Sea. Global traffic will, will, will global traffic now will be rerouted around the Cape of Good Hope in Af on you know way down south in Africa, adding 40% to voyage distance and even more to cost. So what they're looking at here, and this is from uh, uh, Zero Hedge, you know, stuff that comes out of Asia from Singapore, you know, to go through the Red Sea, through the Suez Canal, about 8,440 miles to go around the Cape of Good Hope on the southern tip of Africa. 11,720 miles. So again, about a 40% longer trip via the Cape compared to the Suez Canal. And that's complements a global maritime hub, S&P Global Commodity Insights. So 
Um, little pirates, the Hooties, the Rebels, off the coast of Yemen down here, um, sponsored by Iran, have pretty much made a mess of the Red Sea to where nobody wants to travel in and out of there to carry goods, oil, natural gas, or compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas. Um, and so that's a bit of a problem. So the solution was, at the time earlier in this week, U.S. Defense Secretary, Secretary Lloyd Austin announced the establishment of Operation Prosperity Guardian. Yes, let's take a look at that. Um, a, multinational, a multinational initiative focused on securing maritime commercial routes in the Red Sea amid increased attacks by the Houthis from Yemen. Uh, the following 10 countries initially agreed to participate, the United States, United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Seychelles, and uh, Seychelles and Spain. And here's the release statement from Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III, ensuring freedom of navigation in the Red Sea. Um, recent escalation and reckless Houthi attacks originating from Yemen threatens the free flow of commerce and dangers innocent mariners and violates international law. Goes on to talk about how critical the Red Sea is as an essential freedom of navigation commercial corridor. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Non-state actor, these little rebels, launching ballistic missiles and uncrewed aerial vehicles, so UAVs, drones in other words, at merchant vehicles from many nations lawfully trans transiting international waters. So announcing the establishment of Operation Prosperity Guardian. Um Task Force 153, which focuses on security in the Red Sea. And again, it goes on to name the countries involved. Red Sea, Southern Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, with the goal of ensuring freedom of navigation for all countries and bolstering regional security and prosperity. So just to clarify, we're talking about, here's the area right down here. I think I've talked about this in the past. Aden, A-D-E-N, original pronunciation may have been E-D-E-N, Eden, Aden. Some people speculate uh, prior to the changes post-flood, this area may have been ground zero for the Garden of Eden. I don't know, but interesting little phonetic play on the word Aden, Eden, all the different languages. Uh, in the area. It's curious. Um, I don't think the earth looked like this pre-flood. And then uh, there is a Peleg, I believe, is land divided. Talks about that. And I think, oh, Genesis 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in there, uh, the division of the land. It's just one statement made on that. That actually happened post-flood. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, so we got that going on. And this happened on the 18th. Announced the uh, formation of Ensuring Freedom, Operation Prosperity Guardian. Here we are five days later. And it's practically collapsed as France, Spain, and Italy have all announced their withdrawal from the U.S. command structure for the operation, with the three nations stating they will only conduct further maritime operations under um, maritime operations under the command of NATO and or European Union and not the United States. And this just speaks to poor leadership coming out of D.C. Nobody respects President Biden. They don't take him seriously. They don't take the United States seriously so europe you know france spain and italy are getting out of operation prosperity guardian out from under the leadership of the united states saying they're going to answer to nato or the european union so here we are five days later this thing is a failure um 
is what it is. And then here we have an update. This is from Intel Schizo, Schizo. Uh, updated map of warships operating in the Red Sea, Gulf of Oman, Gulf of Aden, Persian Gulf, Arabian Sea. Also adding last night's infographic on which ships are partaking in what operations and the current assets part of Operation Prosperity Guardian, which we just had chronicled, is pretty much done. Uh, this is a neat little um, post by this guy. Uh, and he says, nothing too exciting over the past 24 hours, mainly just updated positions of all the ships displayed on the map. Uh, also a shout out to TB or T Brit 90. And we're going to, sh I'll show you that map as well. Some really good maps as well and recommend giving it a follow up. Excellent, excellent resources here. So look at all these ships we have stationed in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and they still cannot manage all these drones and, um, essentially little bass busters and pirates attacking commercial vessels. And, you know, and it just goes to show just because something doesn't appear to be that sophisticated does not mean it cannot be effective. Um, and the concern is with a lot of these drones is they just launch so many drones at one time that there's just no way they can respond to all the drones. Um, and that's a concern coming out of Israel. What if somebody just decides to launch a ton of missiles or a ton of drones? Well, their defense forces can't respond to all of them. I mean, they'll get a bunch of them, but there'll be some that get through. Um, and the same thing clearly is happening down here in the, in the Red Sea. Um, we'll go to the next one. If you guys want to, again, take the time to look at this, I've got links provided for all these uh, posts, so you can take a little extra time to, to look at it. Um, ships. Uh, Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and so forth. Guardian Public Partners. Other ships. Persian Gulf. Again, links provided. You can look at this. If you want additional time, I'm just going to hit the highlights here, give you resources. Um, <laughs> oh, I like this matters now. <laughs> uh, it's sad. Uh, we're just not credible. We're just not credible. And it's not any more complicated than that. Um, let's, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, Britsky, Britsky, uh, TB90 or T Brit 90. My bad. Here's his, 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 uh, stuff that he's put together. So it kind of shows the range of some of these ships, what they can do. There's a Chinese ship right here. Um, but we got Eisenhower's been all over the place. The USS Eisenhower, the aircraft carrier. Now it's on the off the horn down here in the Gulf of Aden. Well, it was over there in the Persian Gulf about a week ago. Uh, but it shows the range of some of these and capability of some of these ships, what they can do. Um, but again, T Brit 90 is this source. And then previously, um, we had this from uh, Schizo Intel or Intel Schizo. Take your pick. Um, Red season mess. Uh, earlier this week, Micah 1 verse 4, the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will split like wax before the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. So Viceland, uh, Viceland, Iceland finally erupted. Aerial images captured just minutes ago of the newly opened volcanic fissure near Grindavik, Iceland, estimated to be three kilometers long. Uh, so five Ks, three miles. Eh, what are we? A little over a mile and a half then. Um, and here's some of the video from some of these this is fascinating stuff but you can watch these and again this is from uh, the informatic or info well i can't say it links provided but you can see some of the 
video from when, and this thing acted just like a zipper. Once it started to erupt, just the, the, the land opened up and stretched out, you know, in some cases, mile and a half, two miles. Um, unbelievable stuff. And again, this is pre- the informant, my bad, the informant, the informant OFC, uh, independent journalists covering global news and bringing exclusive insights. Follow me to stay up to date with relevant information from a unique perspective. Well, he's got some cool stuff on this volcano, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then the Guardian, I, I took this from today. Um, Iceland downgrades volcano threat level as activity appears to end. Officials say no visible movement at site near Grindavik, but it's possible lava may be may still be flowing underneath the ground. So uh, the activity has subsided. 2.5 miles long, spewing lava into the sky, sky two miles from the town of Grindavik. Volcanic activity seems to have come to an end late yesterday night or early that morning, the Icelandic Meteorological Office said on Friday, adding no activity had been visible during surveillance flights. So, and again, they suspect it could be flowing underneath the ground. Authorities lowered their alert level today. A state of emergency declared on Monday was downgraded by a level. So... Authorities begin allowing the 4,000 residents of the evacuated town access to the small fishing port between 7A and 4P. Not safe, though, to stay overnight. So, again, all kinds of... Let's see what this shows. Like, this one's in minute 18. This is called Guardian. Some of these videos are just... They're, they're kind of mesmerizing. They're beautiful, but obviously very destructive. Um, I, re- I was reading somewhere somebody was upset <laughs> this was going to affect global warming global change calculations the, the, did you know I don't know if y'all know this but these volcanoes volcanoes can, can spew a bunch of gases into the earth's atmosphere that disrupt all these calculations in fact some have speculated that volcanoes may do more may spew more gases than humans are capable of. I, who knew? Unbelievable. So, uh, but again, if you want to check these out, links are provided for uh, the Guardian article. There it is right there. Click on it. You can, you can get that. We're going to close with Pope Francis as a reminder, Hebrews 13, verse 4. Let marriage, marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Uh Uh-oh, there's that dirty little J word a lot of people don't like. Judge, there is judgment for immoral behavior. God still says that's the case. Uh Please take all complaints to him. He's a big boy. He can handle it. I'm the messenger. It does say what it says. Um, And um, marriage is still, according to God, between a man and a woman. And with that, we're going to talk about Pope Francis. And this is a headline from NPR. Pope Francis approves Catholic blessings for same-sex couples, but not for marriage. Uh, and this is a statement, fiducious supplicants on the pastoral meaning of blessings marks a major departure for the Vatican, which only two years ago had said God cannot bless sin. Here's the article link, which I'll show you the article link right here, uh, where I pulled this from. So if you want to read the article, please feel free to pull it up. Um, There's Francis. Um, Still, the Vatican stressed that marriage remains exclusively between a man and a woman, and any priests granting a blessing 
to a same-sex couple must, quote, avoid any form of confusion or scandal. That's right. And that's the goal here of the, of the, of the Vatican is to avoid confusion. Um, <laughs> this provides the link of what was stated a couple of days ago as compared to the controversial decision of 2021. So you can click. We're going to focus on what was declared just a couple of days ago. So, you know, for the record here, this article does outline up to, holy cow, 45 different statements or proclamations as to why we can, or priests can, I'm sorry, priests can bless couples of the same sex. But but I want to focus on section three here, blessings of couples in irregular situations. So I think this article title is a little bit misleading. I mean, so if we're going to talk about couples of the same sex, you know, that's, oh yeah, and it's, it's like that's a throw in. Oh yeah, and couples of the same sex. But we will also be willing to bless couples in irregular situations. Now that seems to be a pretty broadly defined term, and that could that could encompass a lot of different situations. And you know what we need to focus on here is the clarity with which the Vatican and Pope Francis is communicating here. And let's just take a look at thirty one, for instance. Makes perfect sense to me. Within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessings for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex, the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesial authorities to avoid producing confusion with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. In such cases, a blessing may be imparted that not only has an ascending value, but also involves the invocation of a blessing that descends from God upon those who, recognizing themselves to be destitute and in need of his help, do not claim a legitimation of their own status, but who beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives and their relationships be enriched, healed, and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. These forms of blessing express a supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulse of his spirit, what classical theology calls actual grace, so that human relationships may mature and grow indefinitely to the gospel that may be freed from their imperfections and frailty, and that they may express themselves in the ever-increasing dimension of the divine love. Okay, I'm just not that smart. I'll fully admit it. I, I don't see that as being a, a clear statement. And by the way, I think that is two sentences. Oh, there's three. My bad. I see at least three sentences. Holy cow. And we're supposed to make sense of that. And that's that's supposed to um, clarify the situation. Good grief. And this just goes on and on. I mean, I did not read all of it. Um, a bunch of technical psycho babble that makes... Not a whole lot of sense. Uh, and, and and frankly, I'm just I just may not be that smart. I, I will openly admit that to people. I'm I'm not capable of of reading this and comprehending some of this stuff. I don't get it. So um but you know, their intent was to provide clarity. Uh where is it? Let's get back to that. Yeah. Um Where did he say that? He did say that. A uh, new document. Same point. Yeah, <laughs> here it is. Still, the Vatican stressed that marriage remains exclusively between a man and a woman, and any priests granting blessing to a same sex couple must avoid any form of confusion or scandal. That's right. Well, I tell you what, this, this whole document clarifies it all doesn't it and we're looking for clarity and not looking to create scandal okay francis is uh not a friend of the word he's just not 
and that would be the Word of God, the Bible. You now we quote some scripture here, and we we break it down, and we talk a little bit about it. You know, frankly, you could have stopped at like fourteen through nineteen, and that would be more than enough to understand uh, some of this. But you know, and then we start getting into theological pastoral understandings of blessings, and we bring man into this situation somebody offering their interpretation of it. And that's why all of us as individuals should read and be guided by the Spirit of God. Not to say it's not valuable to listen to what other people say on these topics. But this this did nothing but create more confusion. And ultimately, it is a divergence from God's Word. Um, you know, and I'll stick with the verse we picked here at the top. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. I mean, you could almost make an argument that these, uh, what was the, the, the terminology for this? Um, blessings of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex, it assumes that they're not having sexual relations. What are you going to do with that? you think these people who have uh, chosen to operate outside of God's will for marriage, you think they're behaving when it comes to, to sexual behavior? I don't. I'm just going to say it. It's their business, but I don't believe it. Um, at any rate, I'm done with the Pope. I uh, appreciate you guys for uh, sticking around, reading this, following. Uh Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. We got that coming up. I'm going to have some stuff. I'm going to make a post from an older, uh, I think I'd written something about nine years ago. I'm going to talk a little bit about Saturnalia. You know, we what's old is new again, and we're pretty much repeating things of the past. And it's not about the birth of Christ. It's about a week-long party we are about to engage in starting, well, pr- frankly, probably starting today or last night. Um, 22nd was Friday. Here we are, 23rd, Saturday, Sunday. We got Monday off for Christmas. People are off that week. Repeat the party again for New Year's Eve. So anyway, I digress. But if you guys enjoy this, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. If you are not a subscriber, type in your email address here. Hit subscribe. You'll be notified every time we put something up. Things have kind of slowed down, even though we have um, still have wars, multiple wars, significant wars taking place around the planet. But the the flow of news, um, frankly, a lot of the same, and just trying to catch. Um, updates as they happen. So appreciate you guys following along. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Take care. Bye.